This is Duke University. The idea of geoengineering um, comes about because uh, one might believe or say or, or conclude that either it's just too hard and too expensive to lower CO2 emissions or we can't do it fast enough and the climate is changing too fast. We've got to do something to correct the climate um, in the face of these emissions. And so what you end up doing is you treat the symptoms rather than the cause. You figure out a way to counteract the warming effect of CO2 and these other greenhouse gases. So for example, one idea would be that you um, put little particles up into the atmosphere, into the stratosphere that reflect light. And in, by reflecting sunlight back out to space, you effectively cool the Earth and counteract the warming. Or you can do things by changing the chemistry of the ocean that would put more CO2, take more CO2 out of the atmosphere, and a variety of other, ex other ideas. Um, so interesting. So there's a couple of issues that one needs to bear in mind. Um, that leads me to think that it's a little too early to resort to geoengineering. Uh, first of all, uh, it requires, it's easy to think about it, but imagine if you wanted to continually put particles up into the stratosphere using airplanes. It turns out that logistically that's a difficult thing to do. Secondly, um, you're altering the natural system. You're altering, in this case, the atmosphere to do this, to, to lower the temperature. But while you're lowering the temperature by reflecting light from the stratosphere, you're decreasing the amount of energy that's absorbed in the stratosphere, that's absorbed in the atmosphere, that's absorbed in the surface of the Earth. As a result of that, you're going to change the atmospheric circulation. Uh, as a result of that, you're probably going to change the precipitation patterns. And as a result of that, who knows what. And so what you're doing is you're maybe solving one problem and creating another that is maybe even worse than the first one. So do you really want to take that chance? And the last thing is that simply countering the warming effect of CO2 actually doesn't solve all our problems. For example, in addition to a, being a, a warming gas, a heat trapping gas, carbon dioxide is a weak acid when it dissolves in water or dissolves in seawater. And what's happening is by continually, put CO, continually, to put, continually putting CO2 into the atmosphere, we're increasing the acidity of the ocean. And as we increase the acidity of the ocean, we're making it harder and harder for what we call calcareous critters in the ocean, like coral reefs, like shrimp, like uh, uh, clams and things like that, from forming their shells and their, will be their, their skeletons. And ultimately, that has an impact on the entire food chain of the ocean. And more than a billion people depend upon that food chain. So simply cooling the atmosphere by, say, putting up a reflective shield into the stratosphere doesn't address the problem of ocean acidification at all. So um, interesting idea, uh, a great thing for scientists to uh, study and, and investigate to try to figure out. Maybe we'll learn more about the climate by looking into it. But I, I think it's a potentially really dangerous uh, concept to try. And uh, I, I would say let's leave it on the very, very, very back burner for something to think about maybe decades from now if we need to. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.